get in a position like Bill and Connie were in. She had just gotten saved uh, back in November, the year before last, and they were coming faithful, coming regular to our church services here, and now they're not able to come at all, and and life for them has slowed down to where he's the main caregiver, and it's 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 every day. Uh, but uh, he told me on the phone earlier, he said, Preacher, I really miss being at church. He said, I like watching it, but it's not like being there. And so let's remember them in our, in our prayers tonight and lift them up to the Lord. And uh, let's pray that God would put his healing touch upon Connie to where they could be back at church and, and be back with us. Uh, also, if you would, pray for, for Diane and for Doris uh, with their health conditions right now. Doris is at home, but let's continue to pray for her and Diane. And then, of course, let's remember Sue Bullins tonight uh, down at the nursing home down below us here. She's been there since about late October of last year. And so we want to lift her up to the Lord in prayer tonight uh, as well. And, uh, of course, uh, a couple other urgent requests tonight. Uh, Brother Jason's wife, Bridget, I know she's got some things going on right now with her health that uh, still trying to figure out what to do there with her. I think you said she had to go out this week uh, for some tests and things that she's got to have possibly done. So let's remember Jason and Bridget and their family. And then, of course, let's remember uh, Ashley, uh, Charles. Most of you know her situation. She's got to go and it looks like have an MRI. She's having some neurological things that are going on since her uh, surgeries that she had with her heart. And, uh, of course, that's coming up this week. So we want to remember Ashley in prayer tonight. And uh, Teresa reached out to me. That's a very urgent request in their family tonight uh, as well. And then, of course, I have some other needs here that I'm asking you to help me pray for and hope some of it I can bring to light in our message tonight. Uh, I think somebody told me Wednesday night when they walked out the door, they said, Preacher, I appreciate what you preach to us on Wednesday nights. It's helped me. And I want to do that. I want to encourage you. Some of you are not over here on Wednesday nights. You're in the Master's Club. But go back and listen to our services. I like to take Wednesday nights and encourage you. The world we live in is full of all kinds of problems and things that come at us that try to attack our mind and oppress our minds. And uh, we need that. We need it from God's Word. Uh, I like to take Sunday mornings a lot of times and, and, and bring to light things of Christ and the life of Christ and salvation messages but I'm trying my best to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit on Sunday nights and take messages to challenge us as a church to continue to move forward for the Lord. We don't have time to be stagnant. Uh, I don't like stagnant waters. Amen? It's hard to drink from stagnant waters, but we can drink from the waters that are flowing and moving. And so pray for us tonight. And uh, I want you to pray for this Master's Club, for these children, the workers, and the directors over here. I appreciate the work that that Reggie and Sharon do with that every week, and the teachers that go over and sacrifice their Wednesday nights to help these kids. Pray for Daniel and Taylor and the others that help with the teen group every week. Seen a lot of good stuff with a lot of these teens getting saved of late. A lot of them getting involved in our choir and our ministries here at the church, and that's what we want to see. And so pray for us with that. Pray for the summer camps that are coming up right now. We've got over 40 kids that have signed up to go with us to camp this summer. That's a huge responsibility. And so pray that God will meet the needs there financially and for the young people in the days to come, okay? And then I do desire your prayers for our Christian school, moving forward with that. Right now we've got about 35 kids in this school, folks, and uh, I'd love to see that doubled next year. And I really believe with the help of the Lord and what God's going to do, we're going to see that happen. Uh, i tell you what my prayer was. My prayer was back in August when we were trying to put it all together still, my prayer was for 30 kids. We started out with about 24. I didn't get discouraged with it, but God has sent us 11 other kids since then. And so I'm thankful for that answered prayer. But we need workers. We need teachers. We need volunteers. We need folks that sometimes will just come over and give an hour a week. You'd be surprised what that does to help, especially in the beginning stages of a Christian school. And pray that God would send what we need. Okay, so I've mentioned a lot of things to you tonight. I've brought a lot of requests before you. And uh, I want us to take just a few moments here and pray before we have our specials tonight and before we receive our offering. Now, here's my three main people I want to come down and help me pray tonight, okay? Brother Gerald, thank you for being here tonight. Brother Gerald Haynes, and uh, he's my young man. Amen? And uh, I'm going to ask Mark Spencer, and I'm going to ask Brother Todd over on that side if you would pray for us. 
And uh, Brother Mark, if you'll come down. Any of you would like to join us around the altar here and pray? But I'm going to let these men start us out. We'll start out with Brother Gerald. We'll go to Brother Mark and then Brother Todd. I'm going to pass the microphone to you guys. You pray 30 seconds, whatever the case may be. I want you guys to come up here, and then everybody else can, can join us down there. I want you to present these burdens, these requests, supplications, the things that we have as a church. See this right here? The devil don't like this kind of stuff when folks are moving and folks are praying. Amen. I'm all for preaching. I'm all for singing. But, boy, if we wrap this thing around prayer, what God will continue to do in our church and in our lives and in our homes. And so I'm going to ask Brother Gerald to open us up in prayer. I appreciate him and his dear wife being here with us in the service tonight and his help in our Christian school. And I'm going to ask him to pray first and then Brother Mark and then Brother Todd and you join in with us, okay? Precious Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity to be here in church tonight. We thank you for the message that we heard this morning. Lord, we pray you just continue to keep your hand upon this church. Lord, pray for Brother Mark as he stands in his great endeavor of getting the school started. Lord, we pray for you to just bless and move in a mighty way as you already have. We just witness that. Lord, we thank you for each one that's here tonight. And Lord, we pray, Father, if there's one here that's lost, Lord, Lord, just help them to see that need of a Savior before it's ever lasted and too late. Best thing could ever happen in a person's life is serving Jesus. <coughs> Lord, we just ask you to continue your blessings here, Father. Lord, may the church grow and prosper. Whatever's accomplished, Father, we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for your many blessings on our life and your love on our life, Lord. We just thank you for what you've been doing in our church and the work you've been doing in our church and moving. Lord, we thank you for your spirit. Lord, we thank you for meeting with us every service, Lord. We just thank you for coming down and, and, and putting your spirit in us, Lord. We thank you for just blessing us and, and your many blessings so far. Lord, we come to you today with a, with a burdened heart as a church, Lord. We have many sicknesses and, and many needs in this church, Lord, and we just pray that you'll put your hand in each one of them, Lord. Pray for Brother for the J, Lord, we pray that you'll just touch his body, Lord, heal him. Lord, help him to get back here at church. Help him to get back on the piano, Lord, so that he can serve how you've called him to serve, Lord. We just pray that you'll touch his body, Lord, and do that. And, and Scotty's sister-in-law, Miss Jennifer, Lord, we just pray that you'll touch her, heal her body, Lord. Just touch her, put, put your hand in that situation, Lord, that you know the exact need that is there, Lord. And I just pray that you'll put your hand in that situation and allow it to work out exactly how you allow it to work out. Lord, I pray for, for uh, Brother Jason. And his family and his wife, Lord, I just pray that you'll, you'll help them to have peace in that situation, Lord. I pray that you'll just help them to, to seek your will in that situation, Lord. I pray that you'll touch your body, Lord, help these tests to come back positive and, and just work out according to your will, Lord. I just pray that you'll help them to have peace in whatever that will is, Lord. And I just pray that you'll touch your body, Lord, and, and give them comfort in that situation. And, Lord, we pray for, for Brother Bill and Connie Duggins, Lord. I just pray that you'll touch them. And, uh, Lord, just meet that need however it needs to be met, Lord be in that situation, Lord, just intervene in that situation however you see fit, Lord, so, so that it will work out for your good and your kingdom, Lord. We just pray that you'll meet in that situation however you see fit. And Lord, Sister Ashley, we just pray that you'll, you'll touch her, Lord, put your hand in that situation as well and just allow it to work out however you need it to work out, Lord. We just pray that you'll bring comfort and peace in that situation, Lord, and put your hand in that situation and intervene, Lord. Lord, we pray for Brother Jeff and his wife, Lord, and the health. We just pray that you'll bless them, Lord, and and touch their bodies, Lord. Help them to get back in church uh, consistently as they can, Lord. We thank you for their faithfulness that they have, Lord. We thank you for that. But we pray that you'll just continue to touch them, continue to heal them, and, and bring them the peace and comfort they need, Lord. Put your hand upon them and just help them to have peace and comfort in this situation, in this time. And Lord, help it all work out for your real good like we know you will, Lord. We just pray that you'll help them to see that it'll work out for their good as well. And we just pray that you'll help them and touch their bodies, heal them, Lord. Heal them, Lord. We pray for the kids' ministries here, Lord. We pray for the master's clubs, the teen groups, and, and the school here, Lord. We just pray that you'll continue to bless it, Lord. Lord, you've already done a great work, but, Lord, we know you're capable of so much more. And, Lord, we just pray that you'll continue to bless the school, how you bless, Lord. Continue to send kids and just continue to allow kids to get under the gospel, Lord, each and every day. Lord, there's no telling what difference that can make in a young person's life. 
to hear the gospel every single day, Lord. We just pray that you'll continue to move in that situation and and the, the teen groups and, and the Masters Club, Lord. We just pray that you'll continue to bless them. Bless the teachers that are there, Lord. Give them the wisdom and knowledge that they need to pass it on to those kids so that they might get saved, so that they might live a life serving Christ, Lord, is that which was most important, Lord. We just pray that you'll bless all these needs, Lord. Bless our church. Continue to let our church prosper, Lord. Continue to let our church grow. And, Lord, we thank you for all of it, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, we continue to pray, Lord Jesus. We just thank you, Lord, for your mercy and your grace. Thank you for salvation. God, I want to thank you for our pastor. I was steadfast and unmovable. Lord Jesus, to help and continue to do so, realizing his labor is not in vain. God, I thank you for the vision you've given this young man. God, help us to be a help to him, encourage him, edify him, lift him up, exhort him. Be a help to him, dear God. Lord, the fields are truly white for harvest again, and all ministers to Gospel Baptist Church. God, we're praying for you to send laborers into the fields. God, help us to be found in that number, Lord. Help us to be, us to be steadfast and being part of the, the ministry you've called us to do here at True Gospel Baptist Church. God, I want to thank you, Lord, for the prayer request tonight. I, Mike Kennan come to mind. I, I do pray, God, you'll be with him as his, his dad right there crossing over. The Lord, I just pray your will be done in that life and that need. God, I thought a lot about the shut-ins as Brother Mark was praying there once again. We would all the shut-ins associated with True Gospel Baptist Church, God, but I was just seeing they would love to be in your house, but are unable to be so. God, thank you for their faithfulness. Lord, and we use them as examples as we use examples of the men and, and women in the Bible, Lord Jesus, to follow. God, we ask you as we come to you, Lord, be with us. All those that need that special touch of you from physically, the ones facing surgeries, diagnoses, plans of attack from the cancers. God, I want to thank you for touching my body. God, I praise your holy name for making it easy, realizing you'll never leave me nor forsake me. God, I know you'll be with me all the way. Those times where this flesh gets weak, my faith gets a little weak. How you fan those flames, God, I praise your holy name for that. May you do so, the whole body of believers here at True Gospel Baptist Church. Thanks for our pastor once again, his wife. May we keep a wall of prayer, a wall of grace around them, the deacons and their wives, all your servants, these young men preachers. God, I just pray, God, you'll use them. Open doors as they go into that field, Lord Jesus, give them the field to walk through those doors to minister. Help us like to continue to shine this dark and dying world, God. Say we're lost loved ones. God, my brothers and sisters in Christ are lost loved ones that need you as Savior. God, help us continue to plant those seeds. Water, till you get the, get the increase, and you receive the glory for it. Once again, save that soul that's nearest to hell tonight. Make you on the fire of the hearts of your people. May we never cease to praise you. May we never cease to thank you. For it's in Jesus' wonderful name I pray. Amen. Appreciate you joining us in prayer tonight for those needs and taking those requests before the throne room of God. Amen. And remember, as I preached a couple weeks ago, we're not praying necessarily to make God change his mind. We're praying that, Lord, that our will would line up with yours. God always knows what's best, whether it be through sickness or trial or disease or even death. He always knows what's best. While folks are making their way back to seat before Cassie sings tonight, uh, you may have saw on the screens, praise the Lord for the miracle that happened there, amen. Uh, I told Luke this morning, he looked like he'd lost the joy of his salvation. Now he's got a little smile back tonight, amen. And uh, those guys do a great job back there, and uh, it's a lot of pressure in today's world. So I appreciate uh, the Lord touching and helping in that situation. But you might saw on the screen tonight, we're going to try to have this here every week, trying to have a verse of the week here for our church, a verse for memorization. And, uh, of course, I've got several I'm going to be sending to them. But for the next few weeks, you should see verses on the screen that deal with salvation. And tonight is Isaiah 45, 22. Look unto me and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is none else, he said. And I want you to think about that tonight. Work on memorizing that verse this week. The verses that I'll be have will be dealing with different subjects. But the first ones we want to start out with are verses on salvation that we can memorize, that you can put to use when you show someone how to be saved. Amen? And so think about that. Meditate on that verse this week and let the Lord use it in your life. I want you to pray for Cassie as she sings for us at this time. Goodbye, Terrace of 
it never storms or rains and on the far side with the lamb's bride where god is on his throne rest forever far side will be home and we're trading this for that so if you're wondering where we're at we'll be on the far side with the lamb's bride Ain't that a beautiful song? How many of you got someone that's already beat you home? Hey, boy. Look, songs like that make you reflect, don't it? Songs like that make you be thankful and be appreciative for the time that we'll be over there on that side. Amen. And uh, I'm very thankful tonight for for what the Lord's done in our lives. And uh, I want you to think about that song that she sung tonight uh, as she sings. I think you got one more. (laughs) And... uh, I want you to think, I, I almost wanted to sing it again, but we're going to move forward here. But I, I, I was thinking just today, today was three years since my brother stepped over to the other side. And uh, sometimes you look back and it seems like it only been three days. Anybody ever been like that? You know, and then you look and it seems like it's been 30 years. Uh, you know, I'm coming up on 30 years since my dad left this life. And uh, I was 21, almost 22 years old when dad left. And, uh, boy, I'm, I'm getting close to the age he was when he died. Something to think about. Hey, you kids, I remember when I was a little boy, never thought much about death. Sometimes we would go to a funeral home or we'd hear someone passing. Sometimes I'd sit in those long, drawn-out, primitive Baptist funerals up in Danbury and Lawsonville. And uh, I thought, if there's a God in heaven, I'll take him tonight if we could just get out of here. But, but you know, it's a reality. And it really began to hit home in my life when my grandpa Mabe passed away. And then it seemed like as I got older, maybe it's because I've gotten older, I don't know, maybe it's because I've done so many funerals for other people. You think often, boy, you, every day it seems like somebody's calling me, did you hear about such and such, did you hear about such and such? And we get to live another day and we didn't become part of the such and such. But boy, one of these days we'll be going home. Think about that tonight, rejoice in the Savior's love. And we long to be there with him and see those loved ones that's gone on before us. Amen. All right. They came to Egypt seeking bread. But regret is what they found instead as they stood before the one they had betrayed. And as they looked into their brother's face, I'm sure their minds began to race. And I know within their hearts they were afraid. Joseph held their lives within his hands. He could take revenge with one command. But the words he spoke left them all dismayed. He said, God meant it all for good. Looking back on what he's brought me through, I see things as I should.
good. And though at times I did not understand, it was part of his determined plan. He's worked all things together like he said he would. God meant it all for good. Now I face some valleys of my own, nights in which I felt alone, and it seemed I'd never see the light of day. Oh, but it was in the darkest of that place I found in him sufficient grace, giving strength to help me make it on my way. Though the road I trod was rough and long, he still put within my heart this song. And I can stand before you now and say, God, meant it all for good. Looking back on what he's brought me through, I see things as I should. And though at times I did not understand, he's was part of his determined plan. He's worked all things together like he said he would. God meant it all for good. God meant it all for good. Sure. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's good, Lord. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Quick word of praise. Appreciate that testimony tonight. Let's all stand, and if we can have our ushers come tonight. Brother Kelly's going to sing for us here in just a moment. Yeah, we've got six ushers tonight. That means $60,000, amen. Down the road, I'm going to need about 100 ushers up here. <laughs> No, I appreciate these men coming up tonight. Brother Ray's going to pray for us and ask the blessing over it. And Brother Kelly's going to sing. And then here in just a moment, uh, we'll be in the book of Ezra in the Old Testament. Thank you, Lord, for letting us be here tonight, Lord. Just yes. we'll pray for all the ones on the prayer list, Lord. And just pray that you'll help heal their bodies, Lord, and those battling cancer, Lord. Pray for Brother Todd and Sister Sarah Herbert, Lord, and different ones, and Bill and yes. Connie. Pray for them also, Lord. Just Pray that we're here to minister to any emotional hearts tonight, Lord, and pray for that one here that may be lost. Yes. But they'll see their need yes. tonight before it's ever less than too late to see you as their personal Savior. Pray for this offering and get a blessing for your glory, Lord Jesus, and I pray. Amen. Amen. So listen to what Brother Mark was saying. And earlier today I was going down the road and and I was praying as I was driving. And I uh, thought about Brother Todd and different ones and the things they're going through. And, you know, sometimes the devil tries to play with your mind and says, hey, is it really worth everything? And I don't want to give the devil any credit. He's not, he doesn't have none of the power that God does. He's not even, I doubt if he's even here in the building tonight. Be wise for him not to be. But I thought about this song as Brother Mark had one song on my mind. This one come to mind. I've heard many stories how heaven's gonna be 
And we all gather round God's great throne. When my burdens are many and friends seem so few, I get a longing to see my new home. Oh, whatever is waiting will be worth all my trials. I've endured as I travel down here. I'll see the face of my Savior and I rest from my labor in a land free from a heartache and tears. Oh, now the walls are made of jasper and the streets are paved with gold and the cool river flows gently by. Oh, there I'll see all the prophets and saints there of old in a land where we'll never say goodbye. Oh, see the face of my Savior, and then I'll rest from all my lepers in a land freed from my heartaches and tears. I'll see the face of my Savior, and I'll rest from all my lepers in a land Read from the heartaches and tears. Oh, in a land, read from the heartaches and tears. Amen. Amen. Good stuff, brother. Amen. Appreciate that tonight. Ezra chapter number 3 in the Old Testament. Preaching tonight on looking back or seizing the day. Looking back or season the day. You know, you get to Ezra chapter number 3 in the Bible. Uh, Judah's Babylonian captivity uh, would, uh, would last some 70 years. We won't turn to those passages in Jeremiah that talked about that, but Jeremiah chapter number 25 spoke of that. That 70-year captivity would begin around the year 605 B.C. And, uh, and almost 20 years later, uh, a man by the name of Nebuchadnezzar would completely destroy the city of Jerusalem. He would destroy the temple of God and all the temple furniture that was inside the temple of God. And when I say the temple of God, I'm talking about Solomon's temple that he had built in his day. He would also carry off the treasures of the temple at that time. And for the next 70 years, the people of God would live in bondage. They'd live in captivity. They'd live without a temple to go and worship the Lord. They would live without the feast that had been instituted. They would live without all the sacrifices and the rituals that were given in the law of God. Cyrus the Persian would conquer the Babylonians around 539 B.C. And a year later would give permission for the Jews to go back to return to their homeland. Some 50,000 of them would leave Babylon and make what is estimated to be about a 700-mile journey across the desert of Palestine. And three years later, in 535 B.C., they would begin to lay the foundation for a new temple. And they would end seven decades of bondage without a place to go and worship Jehovah God. 
I want you to pick up with me in the reading tonight in the book of Ezra, chapter number 3, as Ezra begins to lay out the story for us of what would begin to transpire once they returned to their homeland. Remember, it had been 70 years, a lot of the generation of people that were taken, which would have been the more, what I would call the more well-to-do people, the people that were educated, the people that the Babylonians thought could benefit their society, the people like the Daniels and others that were taken. The common people were left behind to die. The poor people, the uneducated, were left behind to die. And, of course, many of them did. And many of the people that were taken into bondage would have been small children. And some of them make that journey back to the homeland. And I want you to notice with me in the reading tonight as we read verse 8 through 13. If you're looking for a name for your baby in the future, there's a few here you've got to choose from. The Bible said now in the second year of their coming into the house of God, verse 8 of Ezra 3, at Jerusalem in the second month began Zerubbabel, the son of Sheotiel and, and Jeshua, the son of Zozadak, there's that name you need, and the remnant of their brethren, the priests and the Levites, and all they that were come out of the captivity into Jerusalem, and appointed the Levites from 20 years old and upward, to set forward the work of the house of the Lord. Then stood Jeshua with his sons and his brethren, Kadmiel and his sons, the sons of Judah, together to set forward the workmen in the house of God, the sons of Hinnadab, with their sons and their brethren, the Levites. And when the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, the Bible said they set the priest in their apparel with trumpets, and the Levites, the son of Asaph, with cymbals. Notice the Bible said here to praise the Lord after the ordinances of David, king of Israel. And the scripture said they sang together by course in praising and giving thanks unto the Lord. Hallelujah, because he's good. For his mercy endureth forever toward Israel. And all the people shouted with a great shout. When they praised the Lord, because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. And the Bible said, but many of the priests and the Levites and the chief of the fathers who were noticed, the Bible said here were ancient men. These were those older men. Those are those men that were alive back when the remnant was taken captive 70 years earlier. And the Bible said those old ancient men that had seen the first house when the foundation of this house was laid before their eyes, the Bible said those men wept with a loud voice, and many shouted aloud for joy. Scripture said so that the people could not discern the noise of the shout of joy from the noise of the weeping of the people. For the people shouted with a loud shout, and the noise was heard, the Scripture said, afar off. Let's pray together. Father, help us tonight as we take just a few moments to open your word. Fill me, Holy Spirit, with the power, the anointing to preach it and teach its truths. Thank you again for what you've done, what you've accomplished in our services today. And Lord, as we come to the final part of this one tonight, may Christ be exalted. And may your people be challenged in Jesus' name. Amen. All God's people said, Amen. I want you to look in your scriptures here. Here in a moment, I'm going to ask you to go to another book that some Christians fail to realize is even in the Bible. But it goes along with the book of Ezra. It's the book of Haggai. I want to encourage you maybe to be looking for that. We're going to go there in just a moment in the Old Testament. But in our text, we saw the laying of the foundation for this new temple. It was a time of great joy, the Bible said, for many of the people. Verse number 12 spoke of that. But verse 12 also said it was a time of weeping. You've got one group over here. They're full of joy because the foundation has been laid. You've got a second group over here. They're weeping. Now, my question tonight is, why would one group be rejoicing? Why would one group be praising God and be full of excitement while the other group is over here weeping? They're crying, and they're full of sadness. By answering those questions tonight, we can uncover some valuable truths 
for us as churches today. And I want to take a moment and do that. Look, you got one group rejoicing. You got one group that's weeping. Why is that? Let's look at some truths. Number one, according to verse number 12, Brother Kelly, I see here, I want you to see the ghost of their past. The ghost of their past. Look again at verse number 12. I'm trying to skip the verses that had all those fancy names. <laughs> no. The Bible said again, but many of the priests and the Levites and the chief of the fathers who were ancient men that had seen the first house, the Bible said when the foundation of this house was laid before their eyes, the Bible said they wept with a loud voice and many shouted aloud for joy. Now what's the ghost of their past? First of all, I see what they could remember. There's a group of older men here that could remember that first temple. That first temple that was laid and, and built during the time of Solomon. They could remember, they could remember the floors. They could remember the walls. They could remember the ceilings that, and all of these things, by the way, the, the floors, the walls, the doors, the ceilings, they were all laid out in beautiful gold. Not fake gold, but real gold. They can remember the walls that were inlaid with precious stones of, of diverse colors. They, they can remember the vessels of gold that was in that temple and the beautiful furniture and all the surroundings. They remembered the gold. They remembered the grandeur. They, they remembered the glory in Solomon's day. By the way, I done a little research on this many years ago. And a little over 100 years ago in 1920... How many of y'all remember a little bit of that time? In 1920, the Illinois Society of Architecture estimated that the cost of gold alone that was in the Temple of Solomon in his day in 1920 would have been valued at over $87 billion. That was in 1920 money. The vessels of gold alone that was in Solomon's temple was estimated in 1920, Brother Greg, to be worth over $2 billion just in vessels. These old men, they remembered when Solomon's temple was one of the wonders of the ancient world. They remembered the Ark of the Covenant. They remembered the mercy seat. They remembered the, the presence of Jehovah God and how real it was when, the, when they went to the temple for worship of God. Y'all still with me? They remembered within the ark was the table that contained the law of God that was handed down to Moses by God personally. They remember those things. I want you to keep your place there and I want you to go to the Old Testament book of 1 Kings. I want you to find 1 Kings chapter 8. They remembered most of all. They remembered how the Shekinah glory cloud filled that first temple. I'm going somewhere with this. The Bible says in 1 Kings chapter 8, if you'll notice it with me as we, as we pick up in the reading tonight, I want you to look with me in your Bible at verse number, verse number 8. The Bible said when that first temple was built in Solomon's day, the Bible said, and, and, and they drew out the staves, that the ends of the staves were seen out in the holy place before the oracle, and they were not seen without, and there they are unto this day. There was nothing in the ark save the two tables and a stone which Moses put there at Horeb when the Lord made a covenant with the children of Israel when they came out of the land of Egypt. And the Bible said it came to pass when the priests would come out of the holy place that the cloud, the Bible said, filled the house of the Lord so that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud for the, notice now, for the, for the glory of the Lord had filled the house of the Lord. Then spake Solomon, the Lord said that he would dwell in thick darkness. He said, I've surely built thee a house to dwell in, a settled place for thee to abide in forever, he said. Do you see the picture here as 1 Kings is laid out when that 
temple was dedicated church. Those old men that stood there in Ezra's day were men that remembered how things were in the original temple. They remembered how not just the gold and the, and the beautiful layout of the temple of God, but most of all they remembered that the presence of God had been in that temple and how the Shekinah glory of God uh, had showed up and showed out in a big way when God met with God's people. I want you to go to another Old Testament book, 2 Chronicles 5. Hallelujah. Whew, trying to not run 15 rabbits up here tonight. 2 Chronicles chapter 5. Look what he says here and pick up with me in the reading as we skip over to two chapters here. 2 Chronicles 5. Look at verse number, verse number 13. The Bible says here, when that ark was brought down to the temple, and the presence of God began to show up in a big way. And the Bible says, whoo, in verse 13, it came to pass, as the trumpeters and the singers were as one, to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music, and praised the Lord, saying, for he is good. I said tonight, for he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. The Bible said when those people began, Brother Mike, to play those instruments, when they began to sing out and to praise the Lord, and by the way, it still works today. Look what happened. They said, for he's good. His mercy endureth forever. The scripture said then that the house was filled with a cloud even to the house of the Lord. So that the priests could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord had filled the house. These old men that had come back to Jerusalem. So they're old in body, in their spirit, and in their worship. They remembered when they were children. They remembered when they were little boys how God met with their daddies and their mamas and how God showed up in a big way when the cloud filled the room. When the presence of God manifests itself. And 70 years later, church, they never forgot that. They never forgot, Brother Jeff, what the presence of God was like. Woo! They not have got over that. Look at chapter 7. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at chapter 7 and verse 1. The Bible said, when Solomon made it into praying, something about that praying, ain't it? The Bible said, when Solomon had made an end of praying, that the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices. Look here. And the glory of the Lord. Who? The glory of the Lord filled the house. Whew. If some of y'all wasn't so dignified, I'd swing through here like Tarzan. <laughs> the glory of the Lord. It filled the house. The presence of God showed up and showed out. And these old men... Or 70 years later, Deborah, they're, they're standing there and they're like me tonight. They're weeping. They said, we don't even have a temple. But we sure do remember what it used to be. We remember how things used to be when we were little boys. And God would show up. And God would show out and... And the presence of God would get surreal. 
that the priest could minister the things he needed to minister. He doesn't stop there. Look at verse 2. And the Bible said, And the priest could not enter into the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. When all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord upon the house, the Bible said they bowed themselves. Don't miss this. It's get you away from watching Benny Hinn reruns. The Bible said they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement. Solomon's not waving his jacket and everybody falling backwards. Help me now. The Bible said when you worship God, it'll put you on your face, not on your back. In the scriptures, when people are worshiping God, they're on their face. When they're against God, they're on their back. And that's biblical. They didn't have carpet. And all the presence of God was surreal. They're on their face on the pavement. Now, we hadn't made it to the parking lot yet, but it wouldn't hurt us. Amen. Look at there. The Bible said, and, and they worshiped, and they praised the Lord, saying, same thing we said a while ago. They said, God's been good. And his mercy endureth forever. See, these old men now in Ezra's day, they, they remembered those days. They remembered every time it seemed like that they showed up. God was always showing out. And they said, if you want to find the presence of God, Go down to the temple of God, and you'll find him there. That's what they remembered. But can I say second of all, here's what they would realize. They knew the temple would never be the same again. It's gone. The temple where Solomon built, that they remembered, it's gone. Those days are gone. And they realized it. I want you to go to the Old Testament book of Haggai. And I'm talking about the ghost of their past. I showed you what they could remember. But I want to show you for just a moment what they could realize. Look what it says. Now, I got a head start on you. I put a bookmark in mine. Somebody give me an old bookmark, Brother Fletcher and Brother Mike. I try to keep it in there. What did they realize? What did they realize, church, that we need to realize? Let's, let's look at it. Look at your Bible says in Haggai chapter 2, in verse number 3. This is the same account. This is, this is the preacher that is that has come, the prophet that has come to, to motivate these people that have come back to Jerusalem to get busy doing what they came back to do. The Bible says in Haggai chapter 2 and verse number 3, Haggai says, Who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory? He said, I want you to raise your hand if you was living. When you saw the temple that was built in Solomon's day, would you raise your hand, he said, if you remember whoo, how when Solomon went in there to dedicate that thing, that the cloud from heaven, the Shekinah glory of God, came down in that place. How many of y'all remember, he said, when he was a little boy, when the priest began to minister, how he couldn't see to minister because of the thickness of the cloud and the presence of God. Look what he says. He said, and how do you see it now? He said, who's among you that saw this house in its first glory? And he said, how do you see it now? Look. He said, is it not in your eyes in comparison 
of it as nothing. You see, they could clearly see that the size of this new temple that was going to be built based on the foundation, that it wasn't the same. The resources used to build it wasn't the same. They realized there would be no ark in it this time. They realized there would be no mercy seat this time. They realized there would be no Shekinah glory this time. They realized there would be no golden walls and doors and ceilings and floors. No beautiful furnishings. And all of that broke their hearts. And they began to weep bitterly. Let me pause there. As I look around the room tonight, there's a few people in this church and other churches You remember the days of old, don't you? You remember how, you remember how maybe in the 70s and 80s around this place, when God met with you? You remember when Brother Fletcher would preach the Word of God, the choir would sing? Do you remember how the presence of God met with you? You remember that? Man, I remember at my home church, I remember sometimes ducking in there in those early 90s. It'd be so thick. Brother Greg, I remember one Sunday, whoo, I remember one Sunday getting up in the choir at my home church, and man, we got to singing a song. And man, it broke loose in there, and I'm sitting in the middle. I don't know a lot of these songs. I'm a young Christian at that time, Brother Jason, just trying to get out of my mind all the poison that the devil had put in my mind uh, uh, when I was a lost man in the music of the world. But man, I remember getting up in that choir that day, and the Lord got on me. I wasn't pastor, and I wasn't preaching, I wasn't youth pastor. But something came over me that day, Sister Deborah, that I have never got over since. I, I wasn't drunk on some wine or liquor of the world, but I'm just telling you the Holy Spirit of God met with me, uh, and he met with seemed like everybody else that day. And boy, how we long to see those days again. Amen? Some of you remember the time when the independent Baptist churches were the fastest growing churches in America. You remember a time when the Bible and church attendance was always held in high regard. It was something about being at church, man. There's something about being there, and if you didn't get there, you just knew that this was the Sunday that you was going to miss out on what God was going to do. You just knew it. And most of the time, it's what had happened. You just seem like some of y'all the old timers in here. You, you remember when the fear of God was among the people of God and, and the church right here on this property and other churches was respected and the preacher was respected. Amen. I said, and the preacher was respected. You remember when the pulpit and the pews were filled with the power of God and the anointing of God and the Shekinah glory of God would show up and show out in a big way uh, and nobody was worried about where they had to be in the next 30 minutes uh, because the presence of God was better than anywhere you had to be that day. Amen. You remember when that presence of God and the power of God was seen in the church house and souls were saved. I remember back when I got saved on that Wednesday night, I didn't want to go home. Brother Ricky, that night I got saved, I went from not wanting to be at church on Sunday that I didn't want to be at home that night. And when I went home that night, I couldn't sleep, not because I was convicted of my sin, but because, praise God, my sins were gone. They were forgiven. They were under the blood of Jesus. 
I can't wait to get to work the next day and find real Christian people like I preached this morning. I couldn't wait, Brother Greg, to tell them what God had done for me last night. How I many of y'all remember them kind of days? Boy, you remember those kind of days. And then you look at today's churches. And people like you, it breaks your heart. As you see churches that have church on the sign, but yet they desire for the things of the world. And you desire for the days of old when God would meet and show up. And each week, people like you and me, you're, you're haunted by the ghost of the past because you long for the days of old. I remember the Sunday I joined my home church. It ain't as wide as this. Probably about as wide as about two sections here. But the day I joined the church after I'd gotten saved and baptized, Brother Eddie... <laughs> I remember standing about right here, uh, to just slightly, look, at my home church, seemed like everything important that ever happened in my life was always on this side. I guess anything I didn't do right was on this side. But every major decision that seemed like I made spiritually in my life, at my home church, was always right here. And that Sunday I joined the church. They were lined as far to the wall that I could see to the right and as far as I could see to the left. And boy, we long for those kind of days, don't we? That's what these old men in the book of Ezra are weeping and crying over. Thank God we got a new temple coming. But it's not going to be like it used to be. That's the ghost of the past. Would you write this down? I can't leave you there. I want you to go back with me. Keep your place there in Haggai. I want you to go back to Ezra. We move from the ghost of the past to the gifts of the present. The ghost of the past, but now the gifts of the present. I want you to notice what your Bible says in Verse number 11, and they sang together by course in praising and giving thanks unto the Lord because he is good. For his mercy endureth forever toward Israel, and all the people shouted with a great shout when they praised the Lord. Look at here, why are they shouting, preacher? Because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. One group of men are weeping and crying because they remember what it looked like in Solomon's day and they hadn't seen that in 70 years. It's a long time. While there's another group of people that are shouting and praising the Lord. Not because the Shekinah glory and the cloud of God had come down yet. Not because here in a moment we're going to dedicate the temple. No, they're just shouting because somebody said right here is where we lay in the foundation for the thing. <laughs> How about that? Now let's understand that group. Number one, what, what, what they could remember. You see, in that group of people, Brother Greg, there were actually more people there that day than was actually there for the first temple because most of that group had died out. Now wait, watch me now. This is so important because I'm looking in our church tonight and there's a group of people you remember when the church was up the road here. You remember when True Gospel Baptist Church started right here where we're at, amen? You remember when this building was built, don't you? Raise your hand with me tonight if you can get it up that high. Remember those days? I wasn't even a Christian back then, but I'd ride by and press the, press the gas pedal a little harder if I was going toward Highway 220. 
I didn't want to be in nobody's church. I'm just telling you who I was. But after I got saved, I heard the stories of this church. I heard the good things that would happen here. Come on now. I'm preaching. You just need to be praising. I remember what it was like in the 90s to come over here to revivals. I remember my grandpa Smith would tell me, you want to go up true gospel tonight? I remember your choir singing, Brother Greg. I remember the preaching. I remember the praising. I remember the testimonies when I would come. And I always held this church in high regard. Though I had my own church. And I remember hearing Cliff and Kay and your mama. And I remember getting in the car and me and my grandpa and my brother Bobby sometimes would come over here together. I remember my grandpa said, boy, that, that little trio could really sing, couldn't they? And my grandpa was the kind, when he got a little something on his mind, he'd talk about it that night and the next day and the next day. And Brother Greg, he'd say, that little old bitty woman, boy, she could get it out there, couldn't she? And sometimes he'd rub his hands like he said, that was good. I can see him now. Hallelujah. One of these days, I'm going to see him again. And the Bible said they, 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 could, they couldn't remember that first temple. They had no clue what it looked like. They had no clue what, what these old men are talking about, how the glory of God met with them. They had no clue what the size of that temple was like. Look at me. All they could remember was decades of bondage. All they could remember was slavery and whips and, and orders and captivity and hardships and, and trials in a strange land. Oh, but listen, how they remembered how God in his glorious power had miraculously delivered them from the bondage that they had been in down in Babylonian land. But they could remember where God brought them from. Amen? They couldn't remember that first temple. But they were grateful. And they were thankful for the new one they had. Look at me. Some of y'all in the room remember how it used to be here. Now look at me. But some of us, we just know what we got now. I hadn't been here but 15 months. I can just remember little things of this church years ago. But all the memories in my mind, Brother Scotty, were all good things. But I'm in here tonight with a group of people, young people. This section here, we'd out one or two of you, I'm sorry. And there are people on this side and people on this side and people that were here this morning. Listen to me. We don't know what it used to be like at True Gospel Baptist Church. We're just thankful that God saved us and pulled us out of bondage and put a new song in our mouth and hallelujah, praise unto our God. Amen. And we're just thankful for what we have now. Maybe it ain't as good as what it used to be. But we still like it. Maybe the services ain't quite what they were in the 80s and 90s and 70s. But we still like what we have. You listening? See, you got to be careful in churches just like in their day and time. You got to be careful because if you're not careful, though you liked the way it used to be, if you're not careful, you'll try to disrupt how good it is now. See, 
what, 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 what they could remember is how they lived in bondage and how God saved them and how God delivered them. And now somebody said, you get to go back to Jerusalem. Jerusalem, we've never been there to start with. And somebody said, you're going back to build a temple that you can worship your God in. I'm looking that way, and there's a big clock, but I also see a city limit sign right now that says the third heaven. Now, if your sign says first drop off to hell, you need to get with me. They said, we've never been there before. But these old men that are coming with us, they said it sure was good back in the day. And Brother Greg, when they got there and they started a little over a year later building that thing, the old men wept and cried. They said, this ain't what it used to be. We remember, hey, son, sit down over here. Let me tell you how God used to meet with us at True Gospel Baptist Church. Well, sir, that's good, and I'm thankful for it. I, I don't know what Shekinah glory is like. I don't know what the ark looked like. I don't know what the mercy seat looked like. I don't know what all the furniture looked like. Somebody told me the thing was laid out in pure gold. Uh, if ours is made out of cardboard, uh, as long as the God of heaven and the presence of God shows up and shows out in a big way, uh, we We'll take what we got. They said, that's all we need. As long as we've got God, who cares if it's made out of gold or not? They said, what we could remember. But second of all, what they could realize. They couldn't remember 70 years earlier. They were too young. They weren't even born. But they could see before them. Look at me tonight. If you're 40 years old or younger, would you raise your hand? If you've come to this church in the last two years, would you raise your hand? Raise it up high. Look all over the room. Do you understand what I'm saying, what I'm asking, what I'm preaching tonight? Look at me tonight. They said, we don't remember how it used to be. We just know that there's a, a new day of new opportunity at True Gospel Baptist Church. Uh, and we're just glad that we're here tonight. And they said, we just want to embrace the new opportunity. The people here like myself, I don't know about the past. I don't know who the Sunday school teachers were here in the 80s and 90s. I don't know who the deacons were. I don't know a lot. I just know that I'm here for a new day and a new opportunity. I left a good thing out in the country. But I've come here to a new day and a new opportunity. And I just need some people to be glad for what we have now. Be thankful for what we used to have. Be grateful. Thank God for the preachers and the pastors and their wives and the deacons of the past and the Sunday school teachers and the people that sung in the choir and the people that picked up paper and the people that cleaned bathrooms and, and the people that ushered and everybody that had a hand in the past. But let's be grateful for what's before us now. Does that make sense to anybody besides me? Kirsten, you're smart. Does that make sense to you? I knew it would. Amen. Hey, hey, look at me now. Mark Spencer, you're a pretty smart guy. You got the right first name. Does that make sense to you what I'm preaching tonight? Hey, hey, does that make sense to you? I thought I saw Hannah's head a while ago. Where's she at? Hannah, does that make sense to you? Amen. You're a smart young lady. I ain't preaching nothing complicated tonight. I'm just saying tonight we've got a new day, a new opportunity. They didn't know about the past. They just were as excited about what God was doing in their day and in their time. Now look here tonight as we close. In our day, a lot of Christians are caught up in the past so much that they never get excited about what God's doing in the present. 
time out. If you've been here since this church was established, would you raise your hand? Boy, you're a small remnant. Y'all need a trophy or something. How many of y'all came to this church in the 1970s? Raise your hand. I'm glad you're still awake. Hallelujah. How many of you came here in the 80s? How many of you came here in the 90s? How many of you came here in the early 2000s? 2010s? How many of you came here since I've been here? How many of you don't have a clue where you're at right now? There's always one or two in a crowd. <laughs> Can I tell you something? If you've been here since the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, early 2000s, into the 2010s, be excited about the past. I'm just being honest standing up here tonight. Brother Ricky, that's one of the things that drew me to this church long before I said yes. I knew this church had a good past. I knew the pastor that started it, with Sister Kathleen. And I knew, look at me, look at me, look, look. I knew... This church had a great foundation. I didn't come over here to try to rebuild the old temple. I'm just over here to try to build a new one that we can rejoice in and be thankful for what we've got. And let's not discourage the new crowd that never was here in the past. Let's support them. Let's back them, and let's all move forward in this generation with what God's given us. Amen? I, I, I say this before we stand. It doesn't mean we change our Bibles. Not looking to do that one. You don't believe me? You should have been to Sunday school the last two months. I said two months, not last two Sundays. We've been dealing on the Word of God and the Bible and why we use the King James Bible. That's important. Not looking to throw our hymnals in the trash, though we got screens, nothing illegal about that, nothing sinful about that. You got to drop that one. If we drop those, throw your phone in the trash. You'll get more trouble on your phone this week than you will that screen right there. Amen. Even if, look, these right here are still important. Because you know what? There's some that were here when you remember the old days. You can still hold it. But you're going to find here eventually them old eyes is going to get so dim on you. It's going to get hard. You might have to look up and see some bigger numbers and letters. Hello? Not looking to throw our hymnals in the trash. Doesn't mean we pick up modern day worship teams and drama teams uh, and get some guy that comes in here with his shirt turned around backwards. Doesn't mean we lower our standards to accommodate the world. Doesn't mean we get more seeker friendly so we can draw the young couples in and the teenagers in and the worldly crowds. I think we got plenty of young people and plenty of teenagers in here and they just need to see some moms and dads and a preacher and a deacon and a Sunday school teacher and an usher and a teenager over here on this side and this side that's excited about what God is doing down at the church house in our day and time. You don't have to draw teenagers in with worldly music and a rock concert because if you get them in a church where Jesus is exalted and praised uh, and the cloud of God and the Shekinah glory uh, and the glory of God shows up every week in a big way, uh, they won't want the world. They won't want the music of the world. They won't want the Bibles of the world and the drama teams uh, and the crowd that draws them in by the flesh. No. God saved me out of every bit of that 30 years ago. 
Rock music was the God I gladly bowed down to. But when Jesus Christ, the one that I said this morning, on the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. And when I got on that rock, I throwed the rock music in the trash can. And never bowed down to that God again in the last 30 years. How God saved your grandparents is how God will save your grandkids. Sister Lynn, I was thinking about that this week as I was preparing a little bit for that message. The same God that saved your daddy is the same God that saved your grandson this week. You hear me? Same God that saved my grandpa Smith is the same God that saved me. Is the same God that saved my son and daughter back there. And it's the same God tonight that will save your family. Now here's my question and we'll stand. Are we going to continue to live in the past as a church? Or are we going to seize the moment? I hope you'll join me and seize the moment. Remember, past is good. Thank God for what was here. But let's take what we have now and seize it. As we stand to our feet. Brother Caleb, would you mind the Lord tonight and whatever, if it's just to play us a song. I I want us tonight, maybe some of you young people that raised your hand, that you're 40 years old or younger. Why don't some of y'all maybe take the lead tonight? Maybe come down here with your wife. Your children, your mom, your dad, maybe by yourself. Maybe you just want to come down here tonight and say, Lord, I don't remember what true gospel was like 20 years ago. I'm just glad for what I got now. I got a church I can come to and worship and praise. That's right, teenagers, come on. Oh, my soul, if I, Brother Daniel and myself and some others around here, get all y'all teenagers on fire for the Lord. You young people in your 20s. Then all these older people that were here and remember how it used to be. You know what? They may weep, but it'd be tears of joy. Of how God's allowing you to come in and maybe take something that they know they can no longer do. Hey, older people, don't discourage that. Everybody will have their time. The Bible says that our lives are seasons. One season comes and another season comes and another season. Some of y'all have served faithfully in this church for many, many seasons of your life. And I thank you for it. I really do. I wish sometimes I could have been here and been at my home church and seen how God worked in this place and worked in the lives of some of you people. All I get is stories of, hey, here's what I used to do. And that's good. But even some of you older people, If you don't do nothing in the next five to ten years around here but encourage this generation to keep it going for another one, then you've done your part. You've done your service to True Gospel Baptist Church. I'm always amazed at how older people sometimes will work with the the, the former pastor or pastors and help build something great for God. And you would think they would respect that and help build it for the next one. But you'll be amazed in churches how people will get bitter. They'll, they'll get jealous. If God used you 30 years ago, 35 years ago around here and you're still here, thank God for you. I promise you, I'll help you find something to do for your age you are now. I remember a man at my previous church, Ken Newsom. I preached his funeral several years ago. He'd been in Mormonism for 40 years. He kept coming to church and hearing the Word of God. And I preached one Sunday morning. He walked out and got saved. He was, he was eat up. When I say he was eat up with crippling arthritis, he was. He came to me one Sunday with tears on his cheek. He said, Preacher, he said, I wish I'd have met you 40 years ago. He said, I can't do a whole lot. He said, but I want to do something around here. And every Saturday, he'd get out on street ministry and hold a sign. He had one particular sign he liked the best. And he'd always reach in the bag and grab it. And he'd hold up a big old sign about the size of a speed limit sign that said, Jesus saves. Every week, 
He'd put the tithing envelopes in the pews. And that's what Ken Newsom done at my home church and until his family moved. I'll help you find something. Just, just don't discourage these younger people that may have to eventually begin to transition into other places and positions of leadership. That's the beauty of the local church is when the older generation, though they sometimes weep over how it used to be, they're still grateful for what they have now and they encourage the next generation coming behind them. Look at here. As I look around this room tonight, I'm in the middle. I'm not quite ready. I'm not quite ready for the Medicare. I don't want AARP calling me just yet. I'm not ready to watch old reruns of Price is Right, though sometimes it's good. But I want to help the generation behind me. So that when I get old, there will still be a true gospel Baptist church for the future. And then, Lord willing, that generation will turn around and do the same. Amen? I hope you took to heart what we preached tonight. And let's keep moving forward and stay fixed on the prize. Amen? Thank you, brother. God bless you for coming this morning tonight. Sure would like to see the glory of God around here on a regular basis. If we'll keep doing what we're doing and we stay out of the way, you'll be surprised how thick it'll get in here. Amen? I want it so thick as old Maze Jackson used to say on the truck driver special when I'd listen to him. He said, I'd like it so thick, you got to get a CNI dog to get out of the building. Amen? Ain't that good? Old Maze, he's in heaven now. Clean those floors over there if you had any hand in that at all. Uh, thank you. It really, really looks good. And those floors over in that gym needed it. <laughs> and uh, it looks brand new. Even some new tile pieces were put down where some were cracked. And um, appreciate it from the bottom of my heart you're doing that. And uh, I do want to say tonight, I'm not going to mention names, but if you've been to the bathrooms any today, we've got new paper towel dispensers. We've got new toilet paper dispensers. And I'm going to tell you, you get happy going to the bathroom around here now. <laughs> How about that? I know some of you probably in there putting your hand in front of that little dispenser just to see how often it'll they actually put one in my little office in there, and I cheated. I put my hand up there just to see. You know, it almost, it's addicting. You pull one out, and that little, that little machine says, Beep, and shoots you another one out. But all that was donated to our church and our school. And uh, we've got soap dispensers coming here very soon as well. That may not sound like a lot to some of you, but it means a lot to me. And uh, I promise you, if you're around kindergartners, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth graders, and sometimes hard-headed middle schoolers, it does sound good. I have papers down here if you'd like to volunteer for late stay or for cleaning, even if it's one day out of the week. We've got some of you that are very consistent at helping with that. That's something that we're looking here very soon in the near future as we build a little bit more with our school that we can actually... Uh, put someone on a little bit of a pay scale for that. And if you need that, you let me and Miss Tina know. We'll do what we can to help in that. Uh, also keep in mind, if you would, if you have a child in a Christian school, we're going to be pushing the next two weeks to re-register current students. I have to. I've got a meeting tomorrow, me and Miss Tina, with two new families already that are interested in our school for next year. But I want to give the first opportunity to current students. Sure and please communicate with me and let me know uh, because we have to know where our numbers are at between now and at least late April. Uh, keep in mind, though, probably on the screen tonight, February the 3rd, we're doing a benefit singing here. We're just providing the property and the building that Brother Xavier Kelly uh, with his youth choir, Only God Choir. I think we've got some kids in here tonight, yep, uh, that are part of that choir. I'm behind that and sing at the Capitol. 
and so we want to support that. We've got folks here in our church that will be part of that singing that evening. It starts at 530. Uh, the Lawson family that will be with us in our spring jubilee, they're going to be here singing that night as well. And so it will be a good night, 530. Make sure you mark that on your last week. Then we're going to look to do that February 4th. And then also please remember to sign up uh, for the Valentine's banquet coming up on the 10th. Okay, thank you for being here. Okay. Okay, raise your hand there, sister. Hallelujah. If you are coming to the Valentine's banquet, we got a lot of names on there. Uh, see, Sister Teresa, I don't get to see what y'all are seeing. All I'm seeing is y'all, okay? Uh, but um, keep that in mind. Let's dismiss in prayer, and to God be the glory. Amen. Prepare your heart for the last Sunday night. In January, next Sunday night, we'll be having the Lord's Supper again here at the church. So maybe, maybe I won't get Catholic on you, but I do want to, I do want to strive to do that every quarter. I think it's important. Um, last thing, Sister Billy, would you raise your hand right there? If you want your name and your birthday and anniversary added to our birthdays and anniversary list, uh, there's some cards out in front for you out there. If not, see her. That helps get you on the screen as we can in anniversaries. All right, let's pray, uh, and to God be the glory, okay? And uh, Luke Barham, back there in the sound booth. All right, the screens are working. You ought to be able to pray tonight, all right?